today we are going to see the next topic which is our second topic of unit 5 which is sequence representation method so we know that data with order is generally called as a sequence i have taught you that in my previous class as well for an example any commodity price that is changing over time is like a typical sequence so you can assume that prediction of a stock market with respect to time is also a sequence so we are here what i am doing is i am assuming a trend of a commodity between the months of january to june as some say x1 x2 so on up till x6 so you have got 6 months and it has got uh, it has been changing the price trend has been changing now as an example what i would say that the price change trend of b goods for an example now if i take that there are only one good then you have six prices for six months but suppose if i talk on b number of goods they can be n number of goods b number of goods so like that i have taken b number of goods from january to june so i can record now as a two dimensional tensor right so this first dimensional is for the first vector is for the first commodity first good uh and for the month of january to june similarly second good from january to june b is the good from january to june so when i keep a record of all of these things i get a two dimensional vector here b represents the number of commodities and the tensor shape is obviously b comma 6 now what exactly is the problem so if the pre if you consider the previous case then the tensor will be of shape b comma s where b is the number of sequences and s is the length of the sequence now many signals cannot be directly represented by a scalar value here we might have represented but many signals cannot or now for an example if you want to represent a feature vector of length n which is generated by every time step which is sequential in nature then you will have to represent it as b comma s comma n b is the number of sequence s is the length of the sequence and n is you know a uh, feature vector of length n so b comma s comma n so it becomes more complex uh, consider more complex text data where you have got sentences into picture then the word which is generated on every time step is a character but not a new numerical value so not represented as a scalar thing so neural networks cannot directly process string data so what is going to happen now you have to convert the words or the characters into numerical values which becomes particularly critical in neural network applications wherein you work with nlp so imagine how much complex text data you are going to deal with so that's why you require a representation method of text sequences um you consider having n words and the process of encoding these text into numbers we call it as word embedding so i already explained you what is one hot encoding suppose i am using here four words from paris italy in france then i'm going to decide a word of vector b of any uh, sequence length that i pick i particularly choose it to be large enough now if it is room then it should be having only most uh, the most significant the significant value i can say the significant value of one will go will change with respect to the position to represent every single word that you are using you already know what is one hot encoding so i'm not diving much into detail here so if this is called as word embedding and here the type of encoding that i'm using is one hot encoding now what is the disadvantage here one hot encoding obviously is a very high dimensional uh, encoding and it is extremely sparse with large number of positions with zeros so it is going to be computationally expensive and it is not conducive to neural network training environment because it is also it will also ignore the semantic relevance inherent in the words like apart from rome and paris like like dislike you know such semantic relevant words it is not going to identify with you now for such group of words if one hot encoding you will be using then definitely there will be no correlation amongst the obtained data you cannot find out the meaning out of it uh, the semantic relevance that i can say out of the original text it will not be properly reflected inside if you go for one hot encoding so you have to search for suitable encoding so before going into that you have to understand what is semantic level of revel relevance so in nlp semantic level of relevance can be reflected through a term which we call it as a word vector so what you are going to do is to measure the correlation between various word vectors 
and that is done through cosine similarity which you already uh, which was already a part of your math syllabus i need not explain it to you uh, if suppose you have got two vectors in n b then the cosine similarity is represented by their dot products and absolute value of their individual dot products so uh, this by calculating cosine similarity you could you could find out correlation between the word vectors so in neural network particularly when you are working with the um, rnn and you really want to work with textual data then you require the textual data to be represented as a word vector uh, and it can be obtained directly through training and we call the representation layer of this word as an embedding layer so before an actual neural network what you fit is an embedding layer so what is this embedding layer embedding layer will be responsible for encoding the word data that you are giving into a word vector okay you are not using one hot encoding you will be using a separate embedding layer that will give you a word vector so it accepts the word number i and using digital encoding such as 2 for i 3 for me you know it's up to the type of digital encoding that you are using it is going to automatically generate you word vectors so the total number of words in the system is regarded as n vocab and the output is a vector v of any fixed length n that you are going to decide. So that's a mathematical representation of a word vector. Now the embedding layer is a very simple uh, layer to implement and what you are going to book is uh, a lookup table. So n number of uh, words and n vocabs you are going to fit in so you have word and then a lookup table. So you create a lookup table in an embedding layer. So for any num word number i, what you require is to find out only one query to the vector at the corresponding position as v is equal to table of i. Into the lookup table, you will find out that word number and calculate and you will get your uh, required word vector. And this embedding layer that you design is trainable. It can be placed in front of a neural network to complete the words into vectors. So definitely, whenever you are working with an RNN, what you are going to design first is an embedding layer. Uh, the resulting representation vector can continue to pass throughout a neural network to complete any subsequent task, to calculate any error whatsoever. So first and foremost thing that you are going to build is to create an embedding layer. So this is a sample code for you. Uh, you are generating here a digital code of 10 words and you are randomly shuffling it and here you are creating an embedding layer with a total of 10 words and each word is represented by a vector of length 4. All you get is to use TensorFlow and layers out of layers you will be invoking embedding and you are creating 10 words of length 4 and definitely you will get a wet vector out of it as simple as that. Now. What are these pre-trained word vectors? So one of the ways to create your own word vectors which I have shown through the embedding layer, right? So the lookup table of embedding layer is initialized randomly and it needs to be trained from scratch. Now, you also have pre-trained word embedding models these days and we make use of them to save our time. So the word vector based on a pre-trained model is equivalent to transferring the knowledge of entire semantic space which can often get better performance. So Currently what we use are the pre-trained models like Word2Vec and Glove. They are very very popular and they have been trained already on a massive corpus, on a massive textual data in order to get better word representation. So you even don't have to work everything on scratch creating an embedded layer to create your own word vectors. All you have to do is to use Glove and Word2Vec as pre-trained models. They have been impressively trained to get better wo word vector tables so that you can use it directly uh, to facilitate migration to any other task. So for an example, the GLOW model, it has got a vocabulary of 4 lakh words and each word is represented by a vector length of 50. It is already pre-trained, it has got best vector representation and you can use that in your model. Okay, so what you have to do is just download the zip file which might be around 69 MB and you are good to go to work with your model. So how do I do that? For an example for the embedding layer random initialization is no longer used. We use pre-trained model as I just told. So I am going to load the glove pre-trained model here and I am going to just set my weights through the word vector table through this glove model. As simple as that using these two lines of code. I'm good to go to use any pre-trained model 
to get my word vector table. Now, how do I deal with sequence signals? So, for example, I have a sentence. I create a boring movie through the embedding layer. It can be converted into a tensor with the shape D, S, M. D is the number of sentence. S is the length of the sentence and N is the length of word vector. So, if suppose I talk on this particular sentence, I have the shape as number of sentences as 1 and I have 5 words in it with approximately 10 as what I am keeping as a word vector to each word. So, how do I suppose calculate a sentence, uh, how do I suppose to follow up a sentence sentiment classification task by extracting the overall semantic features, okay. So, if I just read this, I hate this boring movie. I know that this is a negative in sentiment, but let's go for a particular model to decide whether it is a positive sentence or a negative sentence. So, this is like, I dislike the boring movie and I get an embedding layer which gives me word embedding data, word vectors and then I fit in into any model neural network and get the output as any classification which is positive or negative sentence. So, the first type of act architecture that I could build is a fully connected layer that the basic out basic neural network. So, you already know how it is going to be. It's a combination of linear function along with some mathematical data like an activation function, I'm sorry, mathematical function like an activation function and then you create a output out of it. So, it's something like this. You have words and embeddings, you have a sub-network with parameters and you apply a mathematical model to it and then you get a positive or negative classification. It's a basic neural network that you have studied, correct? Now, what is the disadvantage of this scheme? So, obviously, the number of parameters are going to be very, very high because a small sentence like this requires so many parameters. You imagine about larger text. So, the calculation cost is going to be high and there will be variable length of every sequence. It is going to change dynamically. So, this is logically not good. Second, uh, each fully connected layer has got a sub-network again uh, which has got weights and biases which can sense only the current word. It cannot find out the context information about before and after, obviously. So, when you cannot have this context of before and after word, you cannot understand the semantic sent of the sentence. So, definitely it can after, uh, extract only high level features based on the current input itself. So, this is going to be the disadvantage of this scheme. So, now uh, suppose I develop a shared weight architecture, okay. So, we know that locally correlated data, we have worked with CNN and all, it was reducing the number of parameters because you could share the weights. So, suppose we implement shared weights now again. So, when I do that, suppose I am using the same, see what's the difference from the previous one, you can see a W1, X1, B1, every word had got its own weights and biases. Now, I am making the weights and biases as it is same. So, suppose I am doing that and I am applying it again mathematical model to get my positive or negative classification. Now, again there are pros and cons of this model. Pros are like obviously parameters have greatly reduced, the network becomes stable and computationally efficient. But what are the disadvantages? You cannot have an order of the sequences here. That's why you cannot find out the semantic of this information. And output can still be obtained by shuffling the order of word vectors. So, I already told, right? It just calculates what is like in a sentence if that it, there is good, uh, average, um, poor, like that, it will identify. But if there's a big sentence, the movie is, the movie is good, then probably it might give you an output as a positive sentiment. But if I say the movie was not bad, it, it will not give you as a positive sentiment. It will just take bad as an input and gives you a negative sentiment. So, definitely uh, the con is like it cannot still find out the effective global semantic information, okay, because it could not work with the order of the sequence. So, third will be suppose if I can, if I can extract some semantics out of it, okay. So, what is the solution if I want to get semantic information? I should know the order of this words. With that, I should require certain memory mechanism into my neural network. So, why it works? So, if the network can provide a separate memory variable each time, the feature of the word vector is extracted and the memory variable will be refreshed, obviously. And this is done until the last input is completed and a memory variable at this time stores the semantic features of all the sequences. So, you can see here, what you have got here is a state that we just discussed. 
in uh, RNN. So you have to work with the memory element. Whenever I am working with the memory, I have got a state tensor. So state tensor has it should be working with the current input. It should be working with what was the previous state, previous output, and obviously the inputs and the biases. So this is what is required. Uh, here I am not considering any bias, but still just a simple model wherein it works as an RNN. So as discussed. At each time step, you will be calculating current state of the network as a mathematical function of the previous state and the current input. So you can see how it could be uh, properly written. This is what this is what I can say as an expanded uh, recurrent neural network to the shrinked diagram that I explained in the first class. Okay, so this is uh, about expanded uh, recurrent neural network. And after the transformation, a new state vector HT at every current time step will be obtained. It will be written into the memory state. And finally, using this current state, you will calculate the output by using any suitable mathematical function that is already understood. Now, this is what I called a folded RNN model. Uh, this what I explained to you was an expanded RNN model. And what I am showing you here is a folded RNN model. So probably for a small question like what is an RNN, can you sketch it? For a short question, you could explain this as a particular block diagram of an RNN for short questions, not much in detail. If it is a long question, then explain everything in detail. So folded RNN model, the preceding network is folded on the pre-time step, which is as shown in the figure, and it is cyclically accepts each feature vector xt of the sequence, references the internal state vector, and performs the output OT. It calculates the output OT at the same time. So this is nothing but a recurrent uh, neural network. Now, this was about a sequence representation method for you, and a uh, brief overview again about how did we evolve an RNN out of a from the scratch, I can say, from a normal feed-forward network, fully connected network.